Hi, my name is Troy Patterson with TMP Carbs. Not long ago, I had an opportunity to compare a set of my Venturi List 1150s to a set of modified 1050s done by another carburetor builder. And yes, I realize there is what appears to be a quote-unquote Venturi. The dominator castings have a large radius on entry. You can also see booster Venturi hanging in the middle. This is often confused with a Venturi. Reference to venturi -less has to do with the absence of reliance on a point of restriction between the top of the carburetor and the butterfly beneath to create adequate pressure drop to meter fuel accurately. With 4150 model carburetors, various castings allow me to machine a hole straight through. Usually that's going to be a 1 and 3 quarter inch diameter hole through the carburetor with only a booster venturi and throttle shaft and butterfly in the airstream. That's it. No taper, no other restriction. With the dominators used here, I am limited to the confines of the casting. In this case, the Venturi diameter as cast was a 1 inch 830. In the process of converting these to Venturi lists, the Venturi were machined to a 1 900 inch diameter. There are, of course, many other modifications which work together like a recipe to achieve the results they do. It's a different way to skin the cat, so to speak. I like to think it's the better mousetrap. Hopefully the results here will illustrate that. The engine is one of two going in a 35-foot race boat. The engines are not all-out uh, race engines, but are endurance engines that should make a pretty good amount of horsepower. Here's a breakdown on the engine, 557 cubic inch world product blocks, Dart Big Chief heads, Carrillo rods, Bryant 4 and 3 8 stroke billet cranks, custom CP pistons, CV products, TI intake valves, uh, yada yada, it's intercooled and blown. A quick disclaimer. I had recommended a set of 1250 Venturi Lists for this engine. The customer had a set of 1150s, and so that's what he opted to go with. First up on the dyno, the 1050s. Let's see what they've got. One thousand two hundred nineteen and a half horsepower at seventy one hundred and sixteen RPM, nine hundred pounds of torque, forty nine point two pounds boost. Whoa, the decimal point's clearly in the wrong spot. We've got some other data there, but we'll have a look at that a little bit later. All right, next up, Venturiless eleven fifties. We have 1,222.7 horsepower at 7,005 RPM, 917 pounds of torque, 49.7 pounds boost. The decimal point's clearly in the wrong spot. All right, let's do a quick side-by-side -side comparison of the uncorrected numbers and, ow, my significantly more expensive Venturiless carburetors made a whopping 3.2 horsepower and 17 pounds of torque more than the 1050s. Man, that is disappointing. 
time to pack it in and get a job with a real future at McDonald's. All right, well, I guess it's time for my excuses. Excuse number one, the dog ate my homework. Number two, it worked just fine on my engine. Number three, you didn't say you wanted more horsepower. Number four, there was only time to make one jet change. Number five, it's a conspiracy. Number six, the engine is a dog. Number seven, the 1250s would have made more horsepower. Number eight, the wind was blowing the wrong way. Number nine, I didn't get enough sleep last night. Number four is actually correct. For two days of my time, travel expenses, food and hotel that my customer paid for, it hardly seems worthwhile that all I was able to do was one jet change for wide open throttle. I mean, what was the point? The engine builder dino guy is the one who scheduled it this way. A real shame. Anyway, continuing on. Looking at the graphs for the 1050s, we can see that the at the end of the pull, torque is on a slight downward slope, indicating that pretty much they're done. With the 1150, unfortunately we can't see much, but it looks as though in the last several seconds, torque is actually climbing on an uphill slope. That would indicate that at another 111 RPM, we'd see a larger torque number, right? I'll show you in a minute why torque would start climbing in the last several seconds of the pool. For now, I stick to the numbers I've got, but I'm going to adjust for RPM using a neat online calculator I found on SpicerParts.com. For the 1050s, 900 pounds torque at 7116 RPM gives us 1,219.4 horsepower. 0.1 horsepower less than the dyno, close enough. For the 1150s, 917 pounds torque at 7,005 RPM gives us 1,223.1 horsepower. That's 0.4 horsepower more than the dyno said, but it's close enough. And if you like, at the end of this, you can deduct 5 or 10 horsepower. Okay, let's bring the 1150s up to 7116 RPM and see what we have for horsepower. And remember, these are uncorrected numbers. Interesting. 1,242.5 horsepower. That's 19.4 horsepower more. So now... My 1050s are making a whopping 22.6 horsepower more than the 1050s. Not bad, but not enough to justify a big price tag. Yet. Out of curiosity, if the 1150s had been pulled to 7116 RPM, a higher torque number would have been recorded. How much? I don't know. But if I were going to conservatively estimate uh, the number, let's give it another, say, 8 horsepower, uh, rather, pounds of torque, 8 pounds of torque, to bring it to an even 925 pounds of torque. Nice. 1,253.3 horsepower. Moving on. Okay. Want to know why torque was climbing in the last several seconds of the pool? Watch. Did you see it? Watch again. I'll zoom in. And I'll put a time code generator on it.
The 1150s were only at wide open throttle for two seconds out of the 9 to 10 second pull. Moving on. Now we'll look at some of the other data. This is, of course, a dry sump oiling system. Cooler oil temperatures consume more horsepower to pump than warmer or hotter oils do. This can be quite significant with a dry sump system. In this case, oil temperatures for the 1050s and 1150s is 163.7 degrees and 155.3 degrees, respectively. That's an 8.4 degree difference, which may not seem like much, but look at the effect it had on oil pressure and oil flow. Oil pressure with the 1150s is 3.6 pounds higher, but oil flow is 0.8 gallons less as a result. I think this is measured in gallons. It could be liters or something else. I'm not sure. Anyway, this affects other things as well. For example, dry sump systems are often used to reduce pressure in the crankcase. Reducing pressure in the crankcase increases horsepower. And here we can see that the 1150s are running with a 0.8 inch pound uh, greater crankcase pressure than the 1050s. Now, 8.4 degree cooler oil, 3.6 pound higher oil pressure, 0.8 inch pound more crankcase pressure with the 1150s. Collectively, how much more horsepower consumption is going on here than with the 1050s? I don't know. If you have knowledge and experience about this and you can shed some light, by all means, please comment below. Okay, last but by no means least important, correction for atmospheric conditions. The 1050s were, of course, pulled in the cool air of the morning at 81 degrees and 29% humidity. I'm going to be using the Rob Robinet.com calculator because it simultaneously corrects for SAE, MSA, and STD correction factors. If you recall, these are the numbers for the 1050s, horsepower, torque, and RPM. Results for the 1050s are as follows. SAE, 1,377.404 horsepower. MSA, 1,442 horsepower. That's 1,442.634 horsepower. The 1150s were pulled in the heat of the day. It was 102 degrees that day with an official humidity of between 19 and 21 percent. These readings were most likely taken at the airport. It was definitely more humid at the shop. I say this because it was definitely not the dry heat 19 to 21 percent humidity suggests. The Baltimore Sun states forecasters watch the dew point, not relative humidity, because hot air can hold more moisture than cold air. At 90 degrees, we feel uncomfortable of dew points of 65 to 69 degrees, but relative humidity may be only 44 to 52 percent, half the atmosphere's capacity. Dew points above 70 degrees feel oppressive. All right, so I don't have any hard data as to the exact conditions at the shop, but it was mildly uncomfortable and sticky, mildly sticky. Therefore, I will correct for the 19 to 21% at an average of 20% humidity, as well as at 30 and 40% humidity. But for all I know, humidity was 50 or 60%. Obviously, that would have a pretty big impact on the horsepower numbers recorded. Results for the 1150s adjusted to match the RPM of the 1050s. You can pause the video if you'd like to study the correction sheets. With 20% correction, SAE, 1,444.978 horsepower. MSA 1513.109, STD 1499.698. At 30% humidity, SAE 1456.885, MSA 1525.497, 
STD 1511.992, with 40% correction, SAE 1468.963, MSA 1538.060, STD 1524.459. Gains based solely on matching RPM and correction for atmospheric conditions range from 67 horsepower up to 95 horsepower based on a single jet change. You know, I'm good, but I'm not that good that I could hit the perfect tune on an engine I've no prior experience with that's having this particular combination. Remember these numbers? I went ahead and corrected based on projected torque at peak horsepower of 925 pounds out of curiosity, and this is what I got. I won't bother to read these numbers, but here are the gains over the 1050s. You can pause the video. And again, 80 to 108 horsepower gain projected. Well, there you have it. I've done the best I can to give you the most accurate information. I've explained everything I've done. If I have missed something or done something wrong, or there is something more to know or understand, please comment below. And thank you for watching.